Welcome back to GTEC Motorworks. Today we've got another common problem video for you. It's the BMW F chassis 320D. Let's go look at the common problems. So starting with the rocker cover guys, these always leak. It's a very common problem on most BMWs, but especially the N47 engine on this 320D. Um, there is also a breather pipe which comes off the rocker cover for the ventilation. They are always brittle and as soon as we touch them, they crumble and break. So we keep them in stock at GTEC Motorworks. So rocker cover gasket, common problem on them. Next, we're moving on to the DPF guys on these. Diesel particulate filtration system. Very, very clever idea that doesn't really work unless you're doing 150 miles a day. So if Mrs. Smith is pottering around to Asda and dropping the kids off to the nursery, she's gonna have an emissions light on and she's gonna be ringing us or another garage saying, my car's gone into limp mode and what shall I do? In that case, first attempt will be a regen, second attempt will be a new DPF. Okay, so we'll start with the engine. Now, the earlier F chassis 320D X drive unfortunately still has the N47 engine. The timing chain issue does go all the way up until the 2015. The issue is with the tensioner. I've, I've spoken about this a few times on the other videos with this engine fitted. Um, the bottom line is BMW messed up. They put a tensioner in, which is too short. The chain has slack in it, stretches, it slips. All these things. We do fit the modified timing chain kit with the tensioner. So this issue will never happen again. Next thing we're gonna move on to here, guys, is the EGR cooler. Now these do fail internally and leak, or they start to give you emission issues. Also the EGR valves, they start to give you emission lights on, rough running. That's another issue with this 320D here. Another common issue with this 320D, the F chassis and most 320Ds is glow plugs. You'll often go into the fault memory or you'll have a glow plug warning light coming on. Um, we usually check the wiring, replace the glow plugs if they don't break in the head uh, and then replace the, replace the preheat module as well, which is basically a relay which tells each glow plug to activate. Um, so they always fail as well. We replace quite a few of them. We don't do them separate, we do them all together. Under there, guys, we've got the drive belt, which is also known as the auxiliary belt. We see these all the time. The auxiliary tensioners fail, the belt slip off. A biggie is the crank pulleys. The rubber dampening inside fails after ages and it snaps off. Um, very, very common issue. We see these at least you know, every week. Um, another one we've got is the water pump is run off the auxiliary belt. The water pumps usually fail internally and they begin to leak. Another common issue with this 320D and this particular engine that they put in all the other models is the flexi pipe, which is at the bottom of the DPF. So you have the DPF at the side of the engine, bolts up to the turbo, comes down, there is a flexi pipe there to take away flex from the engine as it moves around. These are so common, we do these all the time. Literally the, the exhaust system bolts onto that flexi pipe and the rest of it is welded onto the DPF system. Um, they always fail, we get the part from BMW, we cut it, we weld it on, back to new. Another issue I want to speak about guys is the swirl flaps. You've probably heard that term up and down the internet. Just type in swir on Google and it will come up, swirl flaps. What are swirl flaps? So let me tell you, swirl flaps are basically flaps which go inside the inlet manifold and they're controlled by an electronic motor. And the job of it is to open and close to swirl the air going into the engine. Apparently it's better for combustion. Wicked idea, awesome idea. Until the swirl flaps snap and they go into your engine and bang. And the next thing is coming on a recovery truck. What's happened? Swirl flaps are broken. New engine or rebuild. BMW won't even rebuild it. They'll just whack you with a 20,000 pound bill. Not gonna be worth it because the car's not worth that now. So, what's the fix? You have any swirl flap faults, or you, even if you don't, take it out, 
get it deleted. We do the swirl flap delete at GTEC Motorworks, guys. We keep the kits in stock. Literally the motor and everything stays in, in place. We set the adaption values so it all operates. You don't get no lights on. We remove the rod, we remove the flaps, we change the gasket, we put the manifold back on and that's the swirl flap delete. Another issue I want to speak to you about, guys. It looks small, but it's a big one. So it's partially engine and electrical, okay? So we often get these coming into the garage, customers basically saying, the drivetrain light's on, my gearbox has gone. Or I took it to another garage, the gearbox has gone, the drivetrain light's on. Literally guys, the drivetrain light on doesn't mean that your gearbox has gone. It can mean that, but it doesn't necessarily always mean that. That means that the car has gone into limp mode and the power to the drivetrain has been limited. Hence, that light's come on to tell you there's a drivetrain fault, take it to someone who knows what they're on about, like GTEC Motorworks in Derby. So, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip here. Coolant temperature sensors. This bad boy right here. This measures the temperature of the coolant going through the engine. Now, sometimes when they fail, they will read minus 40 like you're in suburbia. And all that's gonna do is pump more fuel into the engine. It's gonna do your EGR no favors. It's gonna do your DPF no favors. And it's gonna be basically going around in cold start mode. When the engine is cold, the revs will be up slightly and it will add more fuel to get the engine going. When the ECU sees that the temperature is like minus 40, which when they earth out inside the pins break, they literally, it's, you, bet, you might as well unplug it basically. So obviously we can check that with a simple diagnostic tool, live data, you can see what's going on with it. You can check the wire in there, it's a two pin wire. Always check that before you start taking someone's gearbox out. For other garages that are looking at this as well, I'm not preaching, just telling you my experience. Because we had one a few days ago and the customer rang me and said, MT, can you price me up a new gearbox? My wife's gearbox has gone on my 320D. Funnily enough, it was an F chassis like this, not an X drive though. I bought the vehicle into the workshop. I plugged it in. The temperature was not even moving. The other thing with these BMWs, they've got no bloody uh, coolant temperature uh, gauge inside. It's, it's for the oil. So you physically got to go inside or you go into the hidden menu, but not everybody knows that. So I checked in, it was minus 37. What the fuck? And it's like 26 degrees outside. No, no, no. So I changed the sensor frame and the guy was happy. No gearbox needed, the car didn't stall or anything, it ran perfectly fine. So that's another issue. Sorry I rabbited on about it guys, but you need to look out for it. So guys, we're going to be speaking about the mechanical issues with this particular 320D. This is the X-Drive model, so it's BMW's version of four-wheel drive. Now. This vehicle in particular is in with us at the moment to diagnose a juddering on the front. Now we have diagnosed this as a front transfer box and a front diff, okay? So the transfer box transfers power to the rear wheels from the, rear, uh, from the front to the rear. That's how it makes it four wheel drive. So it has a diff at the back, which distributes the power to both rear wheels. And it has a diff on the front and a transfer box which makes it a four wheel drive. So the issue with this one guys, uh, it looks like it's got an oil leak on the transfer box, which has caused the internals to wear and you get a bit of a jolt when you're building up speed up to 30 miles an hour. So that's quite a common issue with these. With the manual ones of these, the transfer issues will still be there at some point. Uh, the manual ones, you've got a clutch, Flywheels usually fail on them, very notorious. Uh, we see them all the time. We have had a few of these with gearboxes which fail internally as well with clutch problems. Uh, unfortunately, we don't open them and repair them. They are a sealed unit. Uh, and obviously you'll either need to source a uh, reconditioned gearbox or a new one for that. Next, we are moving on to electrical issues with this 320D. So the biggest one I've seen as a BMW specialist is the FRM module. 
It's also known as the footwell module. That is responsible for the lights, wipers, central locking. It's basically a big fat relay. Now, they do get burnt out inside and they always fail, so we replace them all the time. Other electrical issues uh, we have seen, we have the iDrive glitches sometimes, but usually a software update cures that. Uh, central locking issues, sometimes the catches on these surge too much power, blows a fuse, mainly on the earlier ones, but we do see you'll come up to the car one day and one catch just won't release. Obviously you need to check all the powers and everything, but usually it's a catch which fails, uh, door lock basically. Another issue with these 320Ds and some of the other BMWs we see is the fuel flap solenoid. So you'll come to your car one day and you'll press the fuel flap and guess what? It won't open. So the solenoids fail inside and don't release the door. Luckily BMW are clever, they have a release function inside the boot, you pull it and it will open. The solenoid is readily available from BMW and it's literally a plug and play option but we do see this all the time. Another issue we see with these 320Ds and the other BMW models as well is the air conditioning pump. Especially on a nice hot day like this everybody wants to use their air conditioning. The issue is air conditioning is not used all the way around the year which it should be because it's not just for really hot days like this it's also good for you know you can turn the temperature up and it demists all the screens and everything a lot of people don't stick it on until june july and when they do the seals inside break and the pump's not lubricated because it's not been on and they fail so we do see quite a few of the aircon compressors fail on these and then obviously you have to drain the gas you know, fit a new one, refill it all back up. So there you have it guys, that was the F chassis 320D BMW. Some of the common problems. Thank you so much everyone for all your likes, shares and comments. The channel is growing daily, we've got plenty of content coming for you. Please like, share and subscribe and we'll catch you again.